Hello, I'm Joshua Hudson, Program Manager for the National Native Network at the Intertribal Council of Michigan. Welcome to the NNN webinar series on cancer risk reduction in Indian Country. This webinar is titled HPV and Oral Cancer. The technical assistance webinar is being co-hosted by the National Native Network with the Indian Health Service Health Promotion and Disease Prevention, which offers technical assistance and resources for commercial tobacco prevention and control throughout Indian Country with additional support from the Indian Health Service Clinical Support Center. Your presenter today is Chris Johnson, Project Coordinator at the American Indian Cancer Foundation. Chris Johnson is an enrolled member of the Sisseton Wapitan Oyate. He holds a master's degree in educational administration from the University of South Dakota and a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Studies in Norwegian from the University of North Dakota. Chris previously worked at the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board, where he was the program manager for the Good Health and Wellness Program, supporting programs to improve the health and wellness of American Indian communities through policy systems and environmental changes. At ACAF, Chris leads the American Indian Oral Cancer Prevention Project using needs assessment findings to develop materials and resources related to oral cancer screening and tobacco cessation in dental clinics. And he applies his background in policy systems and environmental change across ACAF programs. Part of our faculty disclosure statement, um, we're pleased to offer continuing education credits for participants in this webinar. No commercial interest support was used to fund this activity. This activity is designated as one contact hour for nurses for CE evaluation and certificates. To obtain a certificate of continuing education, you must be registered for the course, participate in the webinar in its entirety, and submit a completed post-webinar survey. And some learning objectives. Uh, by the end of this webinar, participants will be able to identify the relationship between oral cancer and the human, papillom human papillomavirus, HPV, for American Indians, screen patients for oral cancer risk factors, and refer patients to a dental professional for, or an oral, for an oral exam. And the third and final is educate parents, adolescents, and young adults on the oral and HPV-related cancer burden for American Indians and how the HPV vaccine can help prevent oral cancer. An additional housekeeping note, please type questions into the question box on the lower right-hand side of your screen. Questions will be answered during the last few minutes of the webinar. Thank you, and I'm going to turn the controls over to Chris Johnson. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, like Josh said, my name is Chris Johnson, uh, and I'm a project coordinator with the American Indian Cancer Foundation, and I lead our oral cancer prevention project as well as help a lot with our policy system and environmental change work. Um, I'm an enrolled member of the system Watson Oyate, and I have been at ACAS for the past year and a half. And so today we'll be talking about HPV and oral cancer in American Indian communities. Um, Josh, I'm not able to advance the slides. Okay. Um, so Josh already went over the objectives, so I don't think we really need to cover these again. Um, so we like to start off all, all of our presentations by giving a little background about our, our organization. Um, so the American Indian Cancer Foundation, or ACAF as we like to call it, is a national nonprofit established to address the tremendous cancer inequities faced by American Indians and Alaska Native communities. ACAF was founded in 2009 and became operational in 2011. And our mission is to eliminate uh, cancer burdens on American Indian families through education and improve access to prevention, early detection, treatment, and survivor support. ACAF is led by American Indians with a, an array of expertise and experience serving the health needs of our people. Chris, you should be able to advance them now. Okay.
Okay, yep, it's working. <laughs> Um, so our approach is we really believe that Native communities have the wisdom and the solutions to cancer inequities, but are often seeking the organizational capacity, expert input, and resources to do so. So this is really the backbone to a lot of our work that we do at ACAP. Our vision is a world where cancer is no longer a leading cause of death for American Indian and Alaska Native. And we do this through hard work, um, culturally appropriate, community-based programs, and policy change that affords Native people access to the best prevention and treatment strategies, we see a day where American Indian cancers are free from the burdens of cancer. Um, here's a list of some of our current projects that we're um, doing at ACAS. Um, this Today's webinar really falls under the immunizations for cancer prevention, uh, but here's a list of just some of the things that ACAF really work, works on. Um, American Indians face alarming inequities in cancer incidence and mortality. This slide shows the cancer death rates for American Indians versus, a lot, uh, versus white, the white population. Other populations have celebrated decreasing uh, cancer mortality rates in the past 20 years, but unfortunately, American Indian cancer mortality rates are still on the rise. Um, these next couple of slides talk about the human papilloma virus, or HPV, as well as the HPV vaccine. And I thought it was really important to just provide a lot of that background information on HPV and the vaccine uh, before, in go before going more in depth with oral cancer. So here are some of the common questions that we get about HPV and the vaccination. Um, at ACAF, we do a lot of work in communities doing things like health fairs and presenting at community health events and conferences. And we also do a lot of work with clinics and health systems. Uh, this list is um, a lot of the common questions that we get when we're out in the community. So we'll go through um, each of these questions throughout the, slide, uh, the presentation and hopefully answer all of them for you. So HGV, um, here's some really general information about HGV. Um, so HPV is the most common uh, sexually transmitted virus and infection in the United States. There are more than 150 different strains of HPV. HPV often goes undetected um, and produces no symptoms. A person can have HPV for many years, even decades before it's detected or develops into something more serious like cancer. Usually our bodies will fight off the virus before we notice any symptoms. And then finally, HIV affects both men and women. HIV can cause uh, many types of different cancers, including cervical, anal, penile, vulvar, vaginal, and oral cancers, which is what we're focusing on today. Um, a little later, we can, I'll talk a little bit about cervical cancer too, uh, but the majority of this is about oral cancer. Um, HIV cancers in American Indians. So we face significant disparities when it comes to HPV-related cancers. And obviously, this varies by religion. But in the Northern Plains, American Indians are four times more likely to get and die from cervical cancer. And then American Indians in Minnesota are two times more likely to get throat cancers, which is the most common HPV cancer for men. Um, here's a slide about the HPV vaccination and just really shows um, the recommendation for that. So it's recommended that preteen boys and girls start the vaccine series between the ages 11 and 12. But you can start the series as early as age 9. Um, so this updated recommendation is that the vaccine is given in two shots. And then the, so the second shot is given 6 to 12 months after the first shot. Um, but it makes it really confusing. So teens and teen men and women ages 15 to 26 should still get the three-shot series. Um, so if you're starting after your 15th birthday, it's recommended that you get three doses of the HPV vaccine. The second dose should be given one to two months after the first dose, and then the third dose should be uh, given six months after the first. So it gets really confusing, um, but we have some resources to help with that too which we'll cover a little bit later. Um, this slide shows the different uh, HPV vaccines that are currently available. Um, the first one is the quadrivalent uh, HPV vaccine, and this 
Um, vaccine covers three or four different types of HPV, um, so HPV 6, 11, 16, and 18. Um, it also it covers uh, genital warts, protects against 70% of cervical cancers, 90% of HPV positive oral and anal cancers. Uh, the next one is the bivalent HPV vaccine, and this covers two HPV different two types of HPV, uh, HPV 16 and 18. Um, this vaccine covers 70% of cervical cancers and about 90% of uh, HPV positive oral and anal cancers. Uh, and this, the bivalent vaccine is currently being phased out just because we have better vaccines that cover a lot more. Um, and that leaves us with the nine valent vaccine. Uh, this covers nine different types of HPV. And that includes HPV 6, 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. And this protects against genital warts, around 85% of cervical cancers, and around 90% of HPV positive oral cancers and anal cancers. Uh, the nine valent vaccine is currently the most commonly administered of the three different uh, HPV vaccines. Uh, this slide talks about the vaccination rates, um, comparing the American Indian uh, population, um, boys and girls ages 13 to 17, with the general population. Oops, too far. Um, here's the right slide. Um, so as you can see, girls um, get the HPV vaccine a lot more uh, than boys. Uh, but the good news here, you can see that American Indians get um, at least one HPV shot um, at higher rates than compared to the general population. So we're doing a lot of good work. Uh, this next slide talks about the HPV vaccination rates compared to um, other adolescent vaccines. And so even though American Indians are vaccinating at higher rates when compared to the general population, uh, they're still getting the vaccine at a lower rate compared to other adolescent vaccines. And you can see here that um, both males and females for the completion rate, completion of the HIV vaccine is still a lot lower than other vaccines. And so this uh, chart shows us that we have a lot of work to do. So another question that we get when we're in the, out in the communities is, is that HPV vaccine safe? Um, and the answer is yes. All three HPV vaccines went through years of extensive safety testing before they were licensed by the FDA. Uh, Cervarix was studied in clinical trials with more than 30,000 females. Gardasil trials included more than 29,000 males and females. And then Gardasil 9 trials included more than 15,000 males and females. And throughout these different clinical trials, no safety concerns, uh, no serious safety concerns were identified. So this slide talks about the side effects of the HPV vaccine. And like I said, thus far there have been no serious side effects that have been shown to be caused by the HPV vaccine. But with any medicine, including vaccines, there's a chance of side effects. Um, these are usually mild and they go away on their own. And most people who get the HIV vaccine don't have any serious problems with it. Um, so here's some of the side effects. Um, in the arm where the shot is given, um, this can be a soreness or redness and swelling. Um, some people can get fever, and this is um, a, a mild fever, so about like 100 uh, degrees, um, and this occurs about one in ten people, and then a moderate fever um, that occurs about one in sixty-five people, and then some people experience headaches, um, so about one in three people, and then the safety of these vaccines are always being monitored, um, so it's always um, it's there have been no serious side effects that have been shown. 
So how is HPV transmitted? Um, anyone who is sexually active can get HPV. Um, and this is usually through skin-to-skin -skin contact, um, whether that be oral, anal, and vaginal sex. Um, HPV can be passed even when an infected person has no signs or symptoms. And then you can also develop symptoms years after you have had sex with someone who was infected. And this really makes it hard to know when you first became infected. So another uh, big question that we get is, how do I know if I have HPV? Um, like I said in the previous slide, you, a lot of the times you just don't know that you have it. Um, there are no symptoms, and it can be years before you even get a symptom if you do have it. Um, but currently there are tests to examine HPV in the cervix, but there are no approved tests to examine HPV in the mouth or throat. Um, so this means there are no um, approved tests to know if you have HPV if you are a male. Another big question that we get is how effective is the HPV vaccine? And we kind of covered this in a couple slides back, um, but HPV vaccines provide close to 100% protection against cervical cancers and genital warts. Um, since the HPV vaccine was recommended in 2006, there's been a 64% reduction in HPV infections among teen girls in the United States. And then the HPV vaccine has been shown that it doesn't lose the ability to provide protection over time. So as of right now, you don't need any booster shots. Another big question that we get is, do I still need the HPV vaccine if I've already had sex? And the answer to that is yes. Um, the HPV vaccine is recommended based on age and not sexual experience. Even if someone has had, already had sex, they should still get the HPV vaccine. Even though a person's first HPV infection usually happens during one of the first few sexual experiences, a person might not be exposed to all of the HPV types that work are covered by the HPV vaccine. So it's really important to just, um, if you're not vaccinated, to get it, even though you, even if you already had sex. Another question that we get is, do condoms protect me from HPV? Um, HPV is transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact, so barrier methods can help prevent HPV. Um, so it's important to use a condom from start to finish of every sex act, including oral and anal sex. Um, HPV is, like I said, transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, but because HPV can infect areas that are not covered by the condoms, uh, condoms will not fully protect you against contracting HPV, but condoms um, do help somewhat in HPV prevention. Um, do I have to start the, restart the HPV series if I miss a do dose? And the answer to that is no. Um, even if it's been months or years since the last shot, uh, the HPV vaccine series should be completed, but you do not need to restart the series. Um, so now that we have a background knowledge on HPV and the HPV vaccine, let's move more into oral cancer and kind of how those two are interrelated and how HPV can cause oral cancer. Um, so oral, oral and oral pharyngeal cancers, um, I like to just refer to them as oral cancers. So throughout some of the slides, you might see oral pharyngeal in there. Um, but it's really the same thing as oral cancer. And so these are just cancers of the oral cavity or the oral pharynx. Um, so this oral cancer can form in any of these tissues in the oral cavity. Um, so like the front two-thirds of the tongue, uh, the gums, the lining of the inside of the cheeks, um, the floor of the mouth under the tongue, um, the hard palate, which is the front bony part of the roof of the mouth. Um, and then oral pharyngeal cancer forms in any of these tissues in the oral pharynx. 
So you see it more over on this side, in this area right here. And so this includes the middle uh, part of the pharynx or the throat, which is behind the mouth. And then the third, the back third of the tongue, uh, the soft palate, which is the back soft part of the roof of your mouth. And then the side and back walls of the throat, as well as the tonsils. So just a quick anatomy lesson there. Um, oral, oral cancers can start in any part of the mouth um, or the throat, like I said in the previous slide. And most oral cancers develop in the tongue or the uh, floor of the mouth. And squamous cell carcinomas account for 90% of all oral cancers, so that is really the lining um, of your mouth and throat. Um, so here is some of the data with oral cancer. Um, and this is all United States um, general, so not specific to American Indians. Um, so the estimated number of new oral cancer cases in the United States uh, for 2017 is 49,670, while the estimated number of deaths from oral cancers in 2017 is 9,700. Um, these estimates account for 2.9% of all cancers diagnosed and around 1.6% of all cancer deaths. The five-year survival rate for those with the localized uh, disease at diagnosis, so cancer that hasn't spread yet, is 75% 75, 75 uh, compared with only 20% for those who are diagnosed with more advanced stage of the disease. And the mortality, mortality rate for this cancer is high um, due to the cancer being discovered late in its development. Um, so really not catching it until it's already spread to other areas of the body. Here are some of uh, the oral cancer warning signs. Um, so an, a sore in your mouth that doesn't heal uh, within two to three weeks. Red, black, or white discoloration on the tissues in the mouth. Painful or difficult swallowing. Swollen tonsils. Pain when chewing. Um, a hoarse voice. A swelling or a lump in the mouth, a lump on the outside of the neck, um, a numb feeling in the mouth or lips, constant coughing, as well as an earache on one side that persists for more than a few days. Uh, this slide shows some of the oral cancer risk factors. Um, the big one here being tobacco use, um, and then followed by alcohol use. Uh, HPV exposure to the sun, which can cause lip cancer, and then age, gender, and race. Um, HPV 16 and 18 have been strongly associated with oral cancers. HPV infection is a major risk for cancers in the oral pharynx, so that, so really those areas in the back third of the tongue and the throat. Um, Oral cancer is usually, uh, it's typically a disease of older people, and this is usually because of their longer exposure to risk factors. And so incidence of oral cancer steadily rises with age, reaching a peak at persons age 65 through 74. Um, and oral cancer often occurs twice as much as in men than it does with women. And studies have shown that there is a lack of an alarming lack of public awareness about oral cancer and its risk factors. It's one of the least heard of cancers, and a low percentage of people know about the link between smoking and oral cancer. Um, so it's really important that like, all of you guys are on this webinar today so you can really learn more about oral cancer and some of the risk factors associated with it. So we'll move into um, commercial tobacco and kind of how that plays its role with oral cancer. Um, and so a large risk factor for oral cancer is commercial tobacco use, and I'd just really like to mention that this does not include traditional tobacco use. 
um, just the commercial tobacco use, so like cigarettes, um, smokeless tobacco, e-cigarettes, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, commercial tobacco use is estimated to account for 50 to 90 percent of all oral cancers worldwide. The risk of oral cancer is five to ten times higher for smokers compared to those who never smoke. The risk for death from oral cancer attributed to tobacco use is consumption related. So the more commercial tobacco that is consumed over time, the greater the risk you have for oral cancer. Studies have shown that after three to five years of quitting smoking, oral cancer risk decreases by about 50%. Um, and like I said earlier, this, um, all tobacco types are associated with increased risk. The next risk factor that I'd like to talk about is alcohol. Uh, most cases of oral cancer are linked to cigarette smoking, heavy alcohol use, or the use of both alcohol and tobacco together. Um, the risk of oral, oral cancer um, is two to three times higher in people who use both tobacco and alcohol than it is in people who only use tobacco or only use alcohol. Um, about seven out of 10 uh, oral cancer patients are heavy drinkers. And so heavy drinking is defined as an average of two or more drinks for men a day and an average uh, or more than one drink a day for women. And so this risk increases with the number of alcohol drink, alcoholic drinks con consumed per day. So if you had three to four alcoholic drinks per day, you have a two, time, two times higher risk than if you didn't drink. And then if you, have, if you drink five or more alcoholic drinks a day, um, your, increased risk, your risk increases by five times. Um, alcohol dehydrates the cell walls, which enhances the ability of tobacco carcinogens to really perme permeate those mouth tissues. Um, and additionally, nutritional deficien deficiencies are associated with heavy drinking, can lower your body's natural ability um, to fight off those cancers. Um, risk is, the risk is greatest for, uh, like I said, tobacco and alcohol use together um, compared to those who only do um, only alcohol or only use tobacco. And so it's important to note that alcohol use over time and not the type of alcoholic beverage seems to be the most important factor in um, raising cancer risk. So HPV and commercial tobacco use. Um, this is really interesting to me to see that there's a link between HPV and commercial tobacco. And so commercial tobacco use can change the cells, the cells in your body to be more susceptible to getting HPV. And it may also increase the persistence of that HPV infection. Um, and therefore, the chances of developing HPV-related cancers such as oral and cervical cancers are increased. And then obviously commercial tobacco use is um, associated with the worst, worst prognosis for oral cancer. So if you're smoking while you have oral cancer, it, um, you have a worse prognosis. So HPV and oral cancer, um, really looking at the links between them, HPV um, is found in about two out of three of oral oral pharyngeal cancer, so again, those cancers in the back of the, um, the, back of the tongue and then the throat. Uh, people with oral cancers are linked with HPV tend to be younger um, and, less, and they're less likely to be smokers and drinkers. Um, so really HPV is kind of hitting hard with our like, younger population, so it's really important to get um, them vaccinated against HPV. Um, oral pharyngeal, oral pharyngeal cancers that contain HPV, they often have a better outlook than those without HPV. Um, this slide shows um, that HPV positive cancers have increased while HPV negative cancers have declined. So this really aligns with changes in smoking and sexual behavior. Um, so overall incidence of oral pharyngeal cancers increased from 2.8 per 100,000 people during 1988 to 1990. 
to 3.6 per 100,000 during 2003 and 2004. And so if rec recent incidence trends continue, the annual number of HPV positive oral cancers is expected to surpass the annual number of cervical cancers by the year 2020. So HPV prevention and cancer. Um, the HPV vaccine, like I said, protects against oral HPV 16 and 18 infection, um, which prevents uh, HPV-associated oral cancers. So what can you do? Um, really looking at the roles that everyone plays in HPV prevention as well as oral, can oral cancer prevention. So you can educate your staff about the risk of cancer associated with um, HPV infection. So this doesn't just include oral cancer, but Again, that whole list of um, HPV-related cancers that I talked about earlier. Um, you can recommend um, all eligible patients to get the HPV vaccination. I'm just really talking about how safe it is and how effective it is and all of the cancer um, that it prevents. And then the big thing that I like to do with um, dental clinics is really getting them to arrange an appointment um, with the medical clinic for their patients to get the HPV vaccine. A lot of the times our dental clinics are right in the same building as a medical clinic, and so it's the perfect opportunity to just walk their patient over to medical and get them um, going with their HPV vaccination. Um, I always like to end our oral cancer presentations with the Healthy People 2020 Oral Cancer Goals. Um, there are three goals, and they are one, to increase the proportion of oral and pharyngeal cancers detected at the earliest stage. Um, number two, increase the proportion of adults who receive information from a dentist or dental hygienist focusing on reducing uh, their tobacco use or on smoking cessation in the past year. And then finally, number three is to increase the proportion of adults who've received an uh, oral cancer screening from a dentist or a dental hygienist in the past year. Um, I'd like to really end this uh, slideshow um, just with a lot of our resources that we have developed here at ACAST. Um, they're all available on our website, which is AmericanIndianCancer.org, um, or you can contact me, I'm sure, Josh can get my contact information out to you all if you guys would like actual hard print copies of these. Um, so the first one is our general HPV as cancer prevention um, resource. So it's a handout as well, and it can be a poster as well. Um, so ACAF completed some focus groups with American Indians and the Twin Cities, uh, so our metro area, to gather input from the community on identifying uh, the knowledge gaps about HPV and how to address those gaps. We also looked at what were the attitudes and beliefs towards the HPV vaccination, as well as what other resources or what other barriers are preventing parents from vaccinating their children for HPV. So we really used all of this input, input and information gathered from the focus group to develop a lot of our HPV resources. And so it's really community-led um, resources. So here's the front to this resource, and then here's the back to it. And so we have this um, as like a flyer, and then like I said, we have it in poster side too. Um, this resource is uh, another poster, as well as we have it in a retractable sign, so we use it as a, at like clinics um, and health fairs, and it really talks about how the HPV vaccine can prevent cancer, as well as why it's so important to get the HPV vaccine. Um, yeah, and it really just talks about the different cancers that it protects against and why to get the vaccine. 
The next one is our Prevent Oral Cancer in Indian Country resource. And so this is a, really, it's a booklet. So this is the front and the back side of it. Um, this resource talks about what oral cancer is. It includes a lot of those prevention tips and as well as information on um, the oral cancer screening and kind of what that looks like. So here's the front and here is the middle pages. And we have an awesome design manager here at ACAF that really designs all of this for us. So we're really lucky. Um, and finally, here is our um, last resource that covers HPV, and this is our end cervical cancer in Indian country resource. Um, so this is just a front and back, um, like a, I think it's like a card, basically. And so cervical cancer is the most common HPV-associated cancer for women. Um, this resource that we developed at ACAF talks about what you can do to prevent cervical cancer as well as how to get screened. Uh, so it really has some of the, the HPV testing that we talked about and how to get screened for cervical cancer and kind of how to prevent cervical cancer. And again, like I said, all of these resources are available on the ACAP website, which is AmericanIndianCancer.org. Um, and that's really all I have. Um, do you guys have any questions? Um, just a friendly reminder, if you have questions, feel free to type them in on the bottom right of your screen. Um, we're waiting for some questions to come in at the moment. Okay. And Chris's contact information is showing on the screen now. And also, a friendly reminder for our webinar participants, um, in the right-hand side, under the handouts, we have the slides saved in handout format. If you'd like to download those and keep them for your files, The previous slide showed, um, it's on the screen now, is the American Indian Cancer Foundation. Um, they're available on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on Instagram. And then their phone number is also listed. And on this slide is the National Native Network is our information for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, um, as well as our website, keepitsacred.org. And then currently showing on the screen also is a save the date for our next webinar, which is Tuesday, June 27th at 3 Eastern. Um, and it's a, an update of the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Program, which is administered by National Jewish Health. Um, we'll have Hilary Baca from National Jewish Health be presenting. Um, and it should be really insightful, the progress of the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Program. I'm still not seeing any questions coming in, so we can go ahead and wrap everything up. Um, thank you, Chris, for such an um, informative presentation. Um, so thank you to everybody for attending that National Native Network webinar. We will be sending a brief SurveyMonkey evaluation by email um, later this week. If you're planning to obtain CEUs for this webinar, complete the evaluation survey in its entirety within the next week. Please, please visit our website, www.keepitsacred.org, Find this and other technical assistance webinars, as well as many other cancer and commercial tobacco 
prevention resources for tribes and tribal organizations. We'll be posting the archive of the webinar on keepitsacred.org within the next couple of days. And please follow us on social media for our updates and information for when the webinar is posted and to just stay connected with the National Native Network. Um, thank you all for dialing in and I look forward to um, for you to attend our presentations in the future. Thank you.